So you're watching curling for the first time, probably during the Olympics. Early in the game, the two teams get into a pattern of hitting rocks back and forth, and there's little or nothing left in play. Finally, the skip with the hammer has an easy shot to score one point. But wait, instead they purposely choose not to score. What? While experienced curlers understand why teams blank ends, it can be a counterintuitive idea for new players or viewers. And even those who have been playing for a while may have some misconceptions about when and why we should blank. Here's a breakdown of what blank ends are, why teams blank, and the reason why blanking is a smart strategy at all levels of play. If you're brand new to curling, a blank end is one in which neither team scores a point. This happens when the end finishes without a single rock touching the house. For the team with the hammer, this is actually usually better than scoring one in an end. The reason for this is that when a team scores in four-player curling, they give the hammer to the opposing team. This is not the case in mixed doubles, by the way, where a blank, an unlikely result given the rules of doubles, causes a team to lose the hammer. Anyway, having the hammer is generally worth more than a single point, and gives a team more control over the outcome of the end. Because of this, teams would rather simply not score and take another shot at getting two or more rather than just taking their one point. To think of it another way, one point is the lowest cost the opposing team can pay to get the hammer away from you. If you can instead hold on to the hammer and make the other team pay two or more points in exchange for it, well, you've made a better deal. You may also see blanks used as a form of game control especially at elite levels. If a team can continuously blank ends, they will shorten the game while retaining the hammer advantage. This typically forces the non-hammer team to play more aggressively at some point in order to avoid a scenario where the hammer team simply holds the hammer until the end of the game. This fine balance, in which the non-hammer team has to worry about both potentially giving up a big end, but also can't let things get too simple because of the possibility of a blank, is one of the major strategic tensions in curling. There are some other reasons that top teams blank. You'll notice that blanks are way more common in the first end than later in the game. Now, for one thing, teams are often wary of taking risks in the first end, as they may feel they don't know the ice very well yet. So instead of throwing up guards and playing difficult come-arounds, the teams will just throw rocks in the house, be willing to hit them, and that often leads to a blank. There's also the idea that blanking the first end allows the hammer team to hold the hammer in the even ends. It's questionable whether there's any real impact to grabbing the so-called even end advantage this early in the game, but it's still a thought to consider. At the club level, some skips are hesitant to blank ends, choosing to draw for one or hit and stick rather than throw through or hit and roll out on their last rock. Often, they are more comfortable taking the one point and just moving on with the game. Sometimes, this comes from a skip or a team thinking they play better without the hammer. To be honest, this is rarely, if ever, true. Sure, we've all had games where both teams struggled to get anything with the hammer, and the vast majority of points came from steals. However, if you make any attempt to track the results of club league or bondspiel play over a reasonable sample size, you'll find that the hammer is what's generating the majority of points, no matter what level of play we're talking about. There is an exception to this, though, and it's probably one of the main reasons why some teams are fooled into thinking they're better without the hammer. If you play a lot of games against teams that are either far better than you or far worse than you, most points are likely to come from steals. In these scenarios, the more skilled team will usually score, even when they don't have the last shot. That means the better team will usually score once with the hammer, but then continue to score again and again without it. These games can teach curlers that there's nothing great about having the hammer, when the real issue is just a mismatch in skill level between the teams. That said, if you're playing in a casual league, in most scenarios, taking one isn't much worse than blanking. Your hammer advantage is smaller than in more competitive play. And usually, getting forced isn't a loss. When the hammer team takes one point, that's closer to like the neutral or fair result of an end. 
having relatively little impact on either team's chances of winning. While I wouldn't avoid blanks, it's fine to play, say, an open hit at the end of the end very safely, just to make sure you hit the opposing rock, knowing you're okay with either taking one or rolling out and blanking the end. There's a lot more that can be said about blanking, but this should give you a basic idea of the reasons why curling teams sometimes don't want to score at all. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd really like to support Chess on Ice, join the growing list of users that are backing the channel on Patreon, where you can get added benefits like exclusive strategy videos. Thanks for watching and good curling.